Welcome to The Chem Doctor, and this is the third video in the series on uh, using the spectrophotometer and Beer's Law in order to find the concentration of a substance that is dissolved in water, usually in water, uh, that is colorimetric. In other words, the, the substance, whatever it is that is dissolved, um, has a color that you can see with the naked eye. Now, this is the third video in the series, and I highly recommend that if you are uh, in, a, in a class right now where you're going through this laboratory, that you watch the videos in sequence, because otherwise, if you try to just pick things up right here, you, it may be uh, confusing to you. So as a reminder, the spectrophotometer literally is just a box. It's about the size of a toaster oven. Inside the box is a, uh, is a lamp, all right, and the lamp uh, produces light. Uh, we define the amount of light that is, that is being uh, produced as, as I. That light is directed into a sample, uh, which we call a cuvette. Uh, the light that emerges from the uh, cuvette will be less than the amount of light that went into it because the substance that's dissolved in the solution uh, absorbs some of that light. Um, the instrument is able to analyze the light going into the sample and the light coming out of the sample. It provides us what, with what we call a per percent transmittance, which is simply the ratio of the light that comes out of the sample divided by the light that went into the sample times 100. And this quantity, this percent transmittance, is uh, related to uh, another quantity that we call absorption. All right, and the absorbance of the, the absorbance, the amount of light that is absorbed by the sample is proportional to the product of these three things that, that I uh, have described in the previous uh, video. Um, I'm going to define A here as uh, my path length, all right? And the path length, very simply, is the, uh, essentially, it's the width of the, of the cuvette. And it represents the distance in which the light is going to spend inside uh, the sample. So the, the light has to traverse from one side of the, of the cuvette to the other, and that is literally the path length. Usually... Uh, in, a, in teaching instruments and even research grade instruments, the path length is going to be uh, usually one centimeter. All right, and then I'm defining my B here as being uh, the what's called the extinction coefficient. All right, and uh, this value uh, is experimentally determined for a particular substance. It's a physical property of the substance, and it is going to be in units of reciprocal uh, centimeters and reciprocal molarity and then finally I'm defining the C here as concentration molarity all right which is uh, units of moles moles per liter moles of substance per liter of solution all right now let's get to the point of this video uh, is going to uh, teach the viewer how to do what are called serial dilutions because over here I'm showing alright so here's a sample of unknown solution that your teacher professor uh, teaching assistant has given you and perhaps it's an unknown solution of copper sulfate for which you do not know the molarity and they want you to find the concentration of this well what you're gonna have to do first before you can do anything else is um, you will have to acquire a known solution of the same substance. So I'm going to put that here. All right, and uh, we need a known concentration of this because what we're going to do is take the solution, of the known solution, all right, and, and for our purposes, my known solution is going to be a uh, 0.5 molar solution of copper sulfate that I, that I made very carefully using an analytical scale and a volumetric flask. That part of it I'm going to leave out of the video in the interest of time. The main point is is that I have this half molar solution of copper sulfate and what I need to do with this is take uh, is take and make a series of solutions from this 
that I will know intimately their concentrations and then I'm going to measure their absorbances individually on the spectrophotometer and plot a curve and I'm going to I'm going to put a hand drawn curve down here so we're going to plot a curve of their absorbances all right and the copper sulfate is has its max um, its lambda max the the wavelength that copper sulfate absorbs light maximally is 620 nanometers so that's going to be on my my vertical axis and then I'm going to have my my molarities of the different solutions that I make on the horizontal axis and what I'm going to get from that plotting is going to be a straight line all right and this is what we call a standard curve all right complicated name for a very simple idea the idea is is that we have established a range of known concentrations of copper sulfate we've taken the absorbances of those known concentrations and plotted them as a function of concentration we get a straight line now what we do is we take the unknown sample th that this person has given us that the professor the teacher the teaching assistant whatever has given you you take the absorption of that material all right and that's gonna fall somewhere on on the vertical axis here use a different color we walk that over to our line where it hits the line and then we walk it on down here to the horizontal axis and voila you are going to know the concentration of the unknown all right that's the idea behind this so one of the fundamental things you've got to do in the laboratory is generate this standard curve. Now, to do that, they're going to ask you to do serial dilutions. And the way I set this up is I went on the internet and I looked at the, the common protocols that are used in this laboratory. And it's in my view, it's not the simplest way to do this. But I'm going to do it their way because it most likely will model more closely what uh, um, what it is that they're going to have you do in the laboratory. So to, to do your dilutions, what you're going to do is set up a series of tubes. And what I have found, uh, what I found most commonly when I, I looked at the various experiments is that you're going to start out most often with a 10 milliliter sample of, of your known material. All right. And you're going to, you're going to take um, a certain amount of volume out of this sample which I'm going to call 1x so my 1x solution is a half molar solution of copper sulfate and it has 10 milliliters of total volume in it we're going to transfer from this 10 milliliter tube uh, 8 milliliters into a new clean test tube that already has in it two milliliters of distilled water all right to make to make a new volume of 10 mils now I may have neglected to mention this already but prior to making the transfer of the eight mils here you will have taken the a620 of the 10 milliliters of the half molar so you have you're gonna have that value recorded in your your notebook somewhere all right and I'll I'll come back to that in the next in the next video so you've taken the absorption of this at 620 you then transfer 8 milliliters to a clean t test tube that you've added 2 milli two, 2 milliliters of, of distilled water to, to generate a new volume here which is 10 milliliters so it has the same exact volume that you started with now if you think about this just stop and think about it for a minute you've taken a half molar solution of copper sulfate you've taken eight milliliters of that solution transferred it to another tube that has two milliliters of, of distilled water in it and you you've therefore diluted the solution the half molar solution to a new concentration so what usually um, confuses students is how do we find the new concentration well there's a couple of ways to look at this 
you've taken uh, t 8 milliliters of this and diluted it to 10. So you can take a ratio like this if you want. So 10, 10 milliliters is the new volume. We started with 8. This is a ratio that is 1.25. So this solution is 1.25 times more dilute than what we started with. Perhaps an easier way to look at it is to say that we started with 8 mils this way and we went to 10 milliliters in the new volume. And this is equal to 0.8 or essentially 80%. So this, this new concentration is 80% of what we started with. So now if you multiply that, so we're taking 80% of the original um, 0.5 molar uh, copper sulfate, our new concentration at this point here is 0 0.4 molar. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take 8 milliliters of this. Remember, you're going to be take after you've mixed the solution, you'll take the uh, you'll you'll take the A620 of this. All right, and so you're going to have the absorbance for this and the absorbance for the 1x. Now you're going to take 8 mils and you're going to go to a new tube. And the way I do this is I already have this preset up so that you've got 2 milliliters of distilled water already in it. So the new volume of this is 10 milliliters. All right. Now, we have the same situation here that we had in the previous dilution. So we've gone from 8 milliliters to 10 milliliters. This solution is 1.25 times more dilute than the previous one, or it's eight at 80% again, 0 0.8, of a 0 0.4 molar solution. All right. So the new concentration here is going to be 0 0.8. 3,2 molar of copper sulfate. All right, you you want to grab your A620, and in the next video, I'm actually going to go into detail how you should be uh, doing this. For now, I want to keep moving. So you take your A620, write it down, and then we're going to take and we're going to transfer eight mils again. All right, so hopefully you're getting the hang of this, and we're going to go into a tube that has two mils already set up in it of distilled water. All right, again, our dilution is going to be 8 over 10, or 0 0.8 times 0 0.32 molar. Let me clean that up a little bit. All right, and the result is going to be that uh, we have a solution here that's going to be uh, 0 0.256. Uh, molar uh, in the copper sulfate. Let me just fix that. All right, so um, with this then, so let me just outline what we've done. We've generated a solution and then of course you're going to get your A620 of this. All right, so we have we have now generated we started with our 1x over here, so that was solution number one, and we got an A620 for that. Then our second dilution gave us uh, a 0 0.4 molar, 0 0.4 molar solution of copper sulfate. That was solution number two, and then solution number three was 0 0.32 molar. That's this guy right here. And that was number three. And now we have a fourth solution here. So you're going to have these four solutions plotted. That's what's going to give you in a rough, just a rough drawing here, four points on a line. We're going to plot this. You, you need to do this not freehand, it needs to be done on either like a graphing calculator or on a program on, uh, on a laptop. And you wanna look at your correlation. Your correlation should be better than, it should be a strong 99% on this. This curve, if you've done the dilutions correctly, this curve is gonna be a really tight, nice curve. And then in the next video, I'll describe how you use this to find the concentration of the unknown. With that. 
Um, I'd like to close, and you can find more videos at www.chemdoctor.org.